Hi, this is Mrs. Robel. This is Chapter 8, Covalent Bonding, Part 2. So in this video, we're going to learn how to correctly name formulas for molecules. And then we're going to look at acids and how to name them. And then lastly, we're going to look at Lewis structures and how to draw them. So in this chapter, we're going to learn how to name binary compounds. Now, the good news is when you're naming a compound, you typically take the element name and you don't change it. You keep it the same. But it's the second element where you have to chop off the ending and add IDE. Now, before you need to do that, you should look at the prefixes. So in this table, this is something that you need to get familiar with. Notice that if you have 5, we're looking at penta. If you're looking at 8, we're looking at octa. If you're looking at 10, we're looking at deca. So you need to remember those prefixes when you're naming compounds. And it's based on the little subscript that you see to the right of each element. So how does this work? Well, I'm sure you could probably tell me right away what this first one is. And this is something that you deal with probably a lot. So this is essentially carbon. So notice that the name doesn't change, but um, there's a two next to that oxygen, and that's where you have to add the prefixes. So it becomes dioxide. And notice it's not dioxygen, it's dioxide. Now with the next one, same thing's going on. Um, so instead of uh, carbon, we have sulfur. So notice that we use the element's name. We don't alter it. And then once again, we end up with dioxide. We're going to practice this in class, and we'll have some examples where you have more than just a 2 as a subscript. Okay, so naming acids. It's a little bit different than just uh, binary compounds. Typically, you have hydrogen that is part of that acid. So because you have hydrogen, you want to use the term hydro or the prefix hydro, okay? So all the acids are going to begin with the word or the prefix hydro. And then notice at the end, the um, element that is after hydrogen, we call it the element name minus the ending, which would be ic. So here we have hydro. And this is bromine, but we're going to call it bromic. So hydrobromic acid. That is the name of the acid. And then the second one here, once again, we're going to use the prefix hydro. hydro sorry about that. And instead of iodine, we're going to call it iodic acid. So that is only when you see hydrogen paired up with another element. Okay, now I just wanted to briefly talk about structural formulas because you will see a lot of that in this chapter. Please note that structural formulas, we're going to use the element symbol and we're going to use lines attached to it to represent the covalent bonds. So you have pH3, which is the molecular formula. Then you see um, the Lewis structure, and we're going to practice that in a minute here. And then lastly, we have the structural formula. So that just shows you the covalent bonds. And notice that the um, lone pair of electrons that are at the top are not present in the structural formula. And we'll, we'll do some models to look at the different arrangement of the elements and what kind of shapes they take on when they have covalent bonds. Okay, Lewis structures. What I would recommend is write down this list and then um, when you draw your own Lewis structures, you wanna follow it down the line. Um, first, you wanna figure out the location of the atoms. And I'll just tell you, most of the time, you're gonna pick atoms that have the, the most valence electrons. Hydrogen will not be at the center of a molecule. You will have maybe hydrogen bonded with itself, but not in a molecule. Um, you need to determine the total number of electrons that are available. So you want to count up all the valence electrons. And then you want to figure out, if you divide by 2, how many bonding pairs are you going to have. 
Then once you figure out the number of bonding pairs, you're going to place them around the atoms. You're going to figure out, are there any electrons left over? And sometimes there are. If that's the case, you're going to put those leftover electrons on the central atom. And you want to make sure that you have a total of eight electrons around each atom except hydrogen, okay? So hydrogen does not need eight electrons. So please remember that the atoms except hydrogen want eight valence electrons. Okay, so with this structure, we have lithium and hydrogen. And what you need to do is you need to look at the periodic table to figure out how many valence electrons there are. And when you do that, you're going to find that lithium and hydrogen have two electrons available. And how would you draw it? Well, I would put the element symbol of lithium in the middle there, and then I would put hydrogen next to it. And then you would draw two electrons between the two of them. Now, if you want to draw a better representation of it, you just have to have a line between lithium and hydrogen. And that line represents the two shared electrons. OK, here's another one. So we have beryllium and H2. We have a total of four valence electrons. Now, once again, um, beryllium is going to be in the center, not hydrogen. And because I have two hydrogens, I'm going to put one on each side. Now, because I have two valence electrons for each pair of atoms, I essentially have um, beryllium in the middle, and I'm going to draw a line to each hydrogen to represent two covalent bonds. Now, the interesting thing with beryllium is it doesn't want an octet necessarily, and I'll talk more about that in class. So. If you're scratching your head, why aren't there eight valence electrons around uh, beryllium? We'll talk more about exceptions to the rule. Okay, so in summary, we need to look at prefixes. We also need to look at the types of elements that are in a binary compound. Please remember, the first element keeps its name, but the second one, the ending is changed, and it ends with IDE. Also, you might want to remember that with prefixes, if you have a vowel in the element's name, you're going to drop the um, final letter of the prefix, and we'll practice that in class. Binary acids, they always contain hydrogen along with another element, and please remember hydro is the beginning of the name, and then the element with an IC ending. And then lastly, we're going to look at Lewis structures. We're going to count up valence electrons, figure out how many bonding pairs, and we'll put extra electrons that are left over on the central atom to satisfy the octet rule.